welcome everyone again. Thank you for joining me today here. And my name is Vivian Lam and I work at SCAT Savannah College of Art and Design and also called the University for Creative Careers. Today, I would like to explore a little bit more on careers and creative careers at SCAT and any art and design university in the US all of our courses have specific outcomes, as does this small webinar. By the end of this course, we want you to be able to reflect more deeply on your own academic and professional goals and develop a wider set of career possibilities based on your interests and personality, like personalities. So instead of a normal university session that you are attending today, we want to, you will hear me speak a little about SCAD, but really my focus is helping you answer one of the most important questions you ever ask. What am I supposed to do with my life? We all ask this question at a certain point, and most of our students came to SCAD with a big dream. They wanna make films, they wanna start businesses, they wanna design cars or automobile, become a famous artist or performance. That's what this workshop is, a distillation of everything we've learned about how to find your purpose and make it happen. So let's get started. No matter what you want out of life, in a sense, we're all trying to climb the same mountain or a pyramid. So this is the Maslow Pyramid. Maslow was a psychologist who developed a theory of human motivation. As you can see at the bottom of this pyramid, all members of the human race have the same basic needs. Food, safety, love. When we meet that need, we start to think about the long-term future and make plans for setting into a career and start moving to the stage of self-respect at the top is self-actualization. This is when you are climbing to that point, live up to your potential. And this is exactly what we want to find out um, today. When you are looking into university programs, what, how do you, how, what can you do to achieve your self-actualization, to live up to your potential? This is a new book at SCAT that describes seven lessons for helping students to achieve that. Today, we're going to look at a few of those lessons and how that can help you to determine what program major, which university that would be best fit for you. Lesson one, pick your perfect seats. Everybody got a favorite seat and a reason for it is the very same with your education. You've got to make some discovery about what you love. Some of you may be pretty sure that you know what you want to study at university, while some of you have literally no idea what you want to study right now. I want to give you some encouragement. If you worry that you might be in the wrong major, it can be changed. If you fear that you have chosen the wrong career, it can be changed. Your path will change, and that's the part of the fun, because in American education system, especially in the university system, our curriculum is flexible. You can choose your major. Um, you don't need to design a specific major at the beginning of the course. You can decide on the second year or even the first year or second year when you are assured about what major that you want to go for. And that is part of the fun of learning about yourself before you make that decision. And I wanna share with you a little background about university. The idea of a university emerged about 1000 years ago. Back then you have three choices of major. That's right, law, medicine, and theology. For a lot of families, this remain the three top choices for students Academic studies remain fixed for about 900 years. And then here comes the 20th century. 
now you can choose from literally thousands of major. But a lot of us do think in relatively narrow terms about what we want to study. As an art and uni design university, we are constantly evolving in response to a fast changing world. Our students will go on to advance. Our ongoing innovation is designed to keep you and your work ahead of the curve in the creative professions you are preparing to join. You can find STEM majors being offered at art and design schools, design programs that build, create, and enhance our technology and engineering. Here, you can see a list of major using SCAD as an example, what we are, what you can find at an art and design university. And some of the STEM major that you can see here, including advertisement, animation, architecture, immersive reality, user experience, UX design, and so many more. And the data suggests that many choose to follow your parents' footsteps because of what you learned at the breakfast table. Because whenever your mother and father do for a living, you automatically going to know a lot more about this career than anything else. By the way, does anyone want to guess the three career most likely pass on from parent to child? Some are obvious and some aren't. Here it is. That's right. Doctors, lawyers, teachers. Now, there are some obvious way to broaden your options by reading college catalogs and meeting with university reps. You also, you should also take career aperture tests. They aren't perfect tests, but they will expand your thinking, thinking about what you're really looking for. And I also want to share a couple of strategy for identifying possible career option. The first is take a look around you at your home, your community, look at the world. What opportunity exists that need to be addressed? You might even discover your passion in a problem that need to be solved. And that is a possibility to build into your career. And from that, you may be exploring what major program that you're looking into. Here is, we have a perfect example. You may have seen or heard our SCAT performance art graduates, Keandra, who embodied the character of Yana on Empire. She also provided backup vocal for Tyler, the creators, as well as Beyonce's Revolutionary, Revolutionary Coachella performance and on the run second tour. She picked it her perfect seat, following her passion in performing arts, but also pursuing her career in the entertainment industry. So this is some examples of how you match in your career with your passion or even turn your passion into profession, as we always say. Lesson two, this is very, very important. It is not easy as it is shown in the picture, but do the homework. You've got to do some research to see which of your profession might be a viable profession. After you have come up with some ideas about what subjects you like to study at university, you're probably thinking about what secret talents and passions you have. There's no formula here. It's about looking into the mirror, learning about yourself, and look at the world. And think more imaginarily about what you see and what the world needs from you. Do the research. Research is really important. While you're meeting with different universities, ask about what do you grad what do your graduates work if the institution cannot provide answer at the ready be concerned and if you hear a bunch of companies you have never heard of or you don't want to work for then maybe think twice about spending four years of your life there now here is, is another question that you may ask why the us the answer is really simple the opportunities at SCAT, we have sent our grads to all these companies and we have done it in part by helping students understand 
not just what you love, but what you are, who you are. We've identified a few key archetypes that describe most students, no matter what your major is. And let's take a look if you are any of these types. First types, the storyteller, moved by language, love to read and talk and watch and share. Storyteller loves social media. They're funny, they love culture and ideas. So what are some of the career that falls within this type? They are novelists, they're movie, film movie makers, they are journalists, lawyers even, minister or advertiser, actors, producers. Next type, the helper, motivated by altruism and a desire to serve the community, like political leaders, healthcare workers, social worker, designers, and teachers. Also the visualizer, of course, the person who loves to draw, they're the artist, they're the art director, style conscious. Visualizers become book illustrators, fashion designers, or web designers. Another type, builders. They like physical objects. They make computers, rebuild engines, love to hammer and nail and sold and measured. Builders become architects, become engineers, contractors, surgeons, remodelers, product designer. Builder loves to get messy. What is the last type? Solvers. They like to think, analyze, and calculate. They usually love technologies and figuring things out before every everyone else does. They can be analysts, investor, entrepreneurs, CEOs, consultants, or programmers. So many different opportunities here. And here is the first homework that I am giving you. Think about which of the following types best describes you. Are you a storyteller, a helper, solvers, visualizers, or builders? This is just one of the research that you can do about yourself and explore from there. And you have to continue to do research to explore more about your passion and also what professions are out there that can match with what you're going to study. Another lesson here, lesson three, be the unicorn. What is a unicorn? Well, here we mean unicorns combine two skills together. At the university in the US, most programs are flexible. You can become a unicorn by double major or double minor to increase what's called integrative thinking. One recent study found that a double major helps students think differently and also solve intellectual puzzles and approach assignments more creatively. Because why? because you see things from a different perspective. Fun, some fun facts about double majoring. Double majoring find jobs quicker than earn more than their classmate tends to be. And this income benefits holds across industry from architecture to healthcare and entertainment. Another one is double majors only take an average of three or four more classes than their classmate which means that you almost always graduate on time. Um, don't think that you're doing a double major and extra major would cost up another year. Not actually. It depends on how you arrange your curriculum with your advisors, with your academic advisor at the university. Sometimes only taking an additional three or four or five classes will already give you um, another a double major. And one more fact, fun facts is double majors also report to doing more social activity at college than their single major counterparts. As the, say, as the saying goes, people who do more, you do more. Well, now I would like to introduce you a types, two types of unicorns. Unicorns generally come in two types. First is deepeners. 
You study too closely related subjects, delving deeply into a single discipline. And on the other hand, wideners, you choose two separate subjects that is completely different from each other. And I would like to give you some examples here. For example, as get one of our graduates, Jordan, who studies writing and graphic design. Now he is designing books and book covers. It is an example of wideners, like writing and graphic design is completely different, two completely different separate subjects, but you're able to combine it together and even find a job that closely related to both, that is designing books and also um, being a graphic designer for book covers. Another example would be jewelry and fibers. So jewelry design and fiber is two completely different disciplines. Jewelry, just designing jewelry and fiber is using fiber to create different kind of artwork. But one of our alums, Alexandra, who are double major in jewelry and fibers, now working as a designer at Tiffany. So this is an example of wideners. On the other side, how about differeners? Differeners is sounds like more um, popular, more common for students to do when they study two um, subjects that is closely related to each other. One example is one of our alumni who studies animation and motion media design, who now work for BMW North America. And the other example is Christopher, who are majoring in design for sustainability and also industrial design. As you can sound, sustain, design for sustainability, um, research for products and um, things that is can be more sustainable and it can be combined into the industrial design in product design major. And now he is working as a consultant firm, as a consultant, an IT consulting firm. So there are two types of double major and there's two types of um, different ways that you can go for double majors. Now, last but not least, and I would like to bring up a, 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 like a bonus lesson. Cast your dream crew. Everything up until now has been all about you, your talents, your dream, your future careers, and you're going to need something more than you to achieve self-actualization. You're going to need a crew. That's why we're mentioning here another lesson to cast your dream crew. Look for your dream members to work together, work alongside to achieve your goals. Here is a story to share. Christopher knew his passion in fashion. He knew his plan. He wanted to go to New York to create his own label. And he was a unicorn too, but he still does, didn't have his crew. When he was in school at SCAD, he met Alexandra, an out of fashion major who introduced him to David, a student in dramatic writing. And soon after he met Julia, a student in industrial design and also Christina, a student in fashion marketing and management. Following his graduation from SCAT, they worked together and launched the fashion line, Christopher John Rogers. You may have even seen his fantastical garments on icons, including Michelle Obama, Rihanna, Lizzo, and Tracy Liz Rolls. For his impeccable designs, Rogers and his team won the prestigious 2019 CFDA Vote Fashion Fund Award. And to show off his garment, he enlists the stunt of Scott Grad, DVF accessory designer and model. Here it is, Nikita, who is pictured here modeling as Christopher John Rogers original at New York Fashion Week. And let's take a look at more examples from Scott alumni.
SCAD sets you up for success. Hone in on what you're good at, make it great, and use everything that SCAD has to offer with it. SCAD is constantly staying very aware of industry trends and therefore kind of adapting curriculum to play into that and be able to have students be very prepared for real life after graduation. Just seeing the depth and the amount of detail the students put in and when you bring in people from all of those different disciplines together, it's really amazing what they can create. It really opens a lot of doors and a lot of opportunities become real possibilities here. What's different about SCAD is they're setting the bar higher here. The student will really shine outside of this environment and the, the workplace. I wish I was back here as a student sometimes. <laughs> They've got all the facilities you need to do anything you dream of. The reaction to the name of the school definitely brings a smile. It's amazing how every time that I say SCAD, more and more people go, oh my god, you went to SCAD. There's drive, there's compassion, there's a willingness to take huge risks. I just don't know that it exists anywhere else. Because of SCAD, I got my dream job at Disney. Writing artist at Microsoft. 3M Healthcare. Porsche Cars North America. Gensler. Google. Google. Who's Netflix. Netflix. IBM. Lenovo. XR Animation Studio. I'm going to be a product designer for Instagram. Well, now that you have explored some of the examples of what students from Art and Design University have gone to and what they're doing, I would like to go back to lessons that we just, um, we just talked about. First, remember, pick your perfect seat. Know about, ex discover your talents, know about what you're good at, and learn about what your passion is. The second lesson, do the homework, transform your talent into a career, do research into looking if your passion is viable into turning that into a career. Is there any jobs available? What is need in the industry? Look around you at home, in the community, what is needed? That something, is there any solution that you can provide for the world to make it better, to enhance it? Be the unicorn, diversify your talents. Do a double major if possible, do a double minor if possible, or even do a major with a combination of minor, any way that you can, you can do in the American education system. It's very flexible. The last bonus lesson, cast your dream crew. Look around you. Will there be anyone who can work alongside with you to do in projects, assignments, you can even start your own business together. Now let's come back to where it all began. What my self-actualization look like for each of you? I don't expect all of you to find it or figure it out, of course, but hopefully you have some idea now about where you might be headed in your own journeys. Here are two interesting statistics side by side. Everyone in this room should now be that 30%, 33%. More than 90% of today's young people have given serious thought to their future career. Yeah, I think about it. I know what I want to do, but not sure. But only 33% of today's high school students have mapped out a, a plan for your future beyond college. What do you want to do? What career paths are there for you? And we want you to be that 33% helping you doing this admission process with a whole handful of idea about how your life after university might look. University is just a beginning. We want you to think about further than that, what's going after that. Now, you on your way on this, and I would like to give you the golden rules of admission. Four steps. What is the first step? Just really easy, apply it online. 
if you um, always look for any, when you're meeting with a university rep, you can always ask if there is an application fee waiver. Submit an application online really easy. It's just filling out all the personal information. Um, most of the application do not require you to submit all the documents right away. Some do, of course, but most of it, if you apply directly to the university, you can just simply submit the form first. And then, um, for example, at SCAD, you will be assigned with an advisor, an admission advisor who will help you out with your application. That will go into step two, complete your application by submitting all the necessary documents, including your transcript. If you're international students, then you need a proof of English proficiency. And some art and design university require, but some do not, is your portfolio. Your visual art portfolio, writing portfolio, or a video portfolio, for video of performing arts, animation you created, or um, a video that you have, you've been playing a role in as a director, producer, any of those, um, make sure you ask when you submit the application, reach out to the university to ask if this is required. And of course, we always welcome and encourage students to submit anything you have, including your portfolio, that's what I just mentioned, resume, reference letter, letter from your teacher, principal, counselor, and even community, community leaders, if you have do volunteered in your community or anyone you think that is um, available that is that is okay um, capable to, of giving an app reference for you and also your statement of purpose. And after you complete your application, don't stop there. Continue to step three, join events, continue to meet university reps and explore different things at the university. And the most important is step four, stay connected. Stay connected with the advisor, stay connected with the university that you're applying, keep tracking on your status. If you are, have been accepted, is there any scholarship opportunity? Keep exploring that option because there will be a lot um, of different opportunities that you may not discover if you don't reach out yourself. And here is, I would like to share my contact here. If you have any questions about, if you're interested in um, applying to SCAT or if you're interested in um, knowing more about SCAT, please feel free to send me an email. This is also my Instagram. Please follow me on Instagram and you're all welcome to DM me directly for questions, inquiries, or just anything you want to know more about Art and Design University. And thank you everyone again for having me here today. I am going to give this stage back to Mohammed. All right, thank you so much, Vivian. What a great presentation. I love the way how you present. And also, thank I love, you. The, I love uh, your slide. It's so colorful and it's so informative and so visual as well. I love thank that. you so much. Right. It's definitely an icon of an art and design, and that's what we want <laughs> students to feel. <laughs> that's the way what you do okay so actually we're gonna have like 15 minutes more for the q a we're still waiting for the uh, some of the participants asking some questions about the artists about the creative or something so the questions mostly the uh, the student asked questions about the sat and act is that the required for students who are going for fine arts program that is a great question Actually, generally, um, of course, I can't answer for all of the university in the US, but for SCAD, we do not require SAT for international students. And for US citizen, if you are one, this is required last year. But this year, we have evaluating our admission process that um, that requirement may be. Um, re-evaluated from this year on. So but for students from Indonesia, for international students, SAT is not required, like ACT or SAT. But if you have already taken SAT or ACT, it can be used to be a proof of English proficiency, which means that if you reach a certain points or grades, 
from those testing, you do not need to take TOEFLs or IELTS. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much. So, uh, you, uh, so the students who apply for the SCAT specially, so they do not need ACT or ACT, but they need for English proficiency test. Is that correct? Definitely. So, yes. So what about so what about the uh, do, do you guys have for example uh, for the SCAT itself? Do you guys have uh, uh, for the master program for the fine art? We do. We actually right. have okay. even more majors um, on master program. For example, some of our program is actually only available in master, um, including design for sustainability, design management, creative business leadership. Um, some of this major because they're very specific and we would like students to have that foundation before they enter this um, higher level course. So we do and also all of the major that provide um, bachelor degree, most of them would also have graduate program and uh, our master programs are all master of fine arts and master of arts. So um, there's a difference between the two programs when we talk about MA, Master of Art and Master of Fine Arts. Um, MA is mostly, it would take about one year where MFA would take about two years. It depends on what you're looking for. Like um, MA include a lot more, uh, maybe more research phase. You do some more reading, research and writing. And while MFA program, you get your hand dirty a little bit more. Mm -hmm. like it will be uh, more studio work that you spend, you will spend more time on at the studio to finish your work. So it can be sculpture, it can be graphic design. Graphic design students, they will spend a lot of time in front of the computer, of course. And uh, it depends on if you want to get deep into completing a specific project yourself, do research in it, or if you just want to um, in, enhance your loan age into that specific subject. So that will be the difference between our two MA and MFA master program. All right, thank you so much, Vivian. So we're gonna start with the person, uh, we're gonna start with sure. the, uh, the questions from, uh, I don't know who is coming from. Okay, uh, hi, I would like to know what source of the financial aid is over to international students. That is awesome. That is a great question. Um, as I always mentioned, um, always ask for scholarship, no matter if there is or not, because you never know until you ask. Um, at SCAT, we are a nonprofit university. Um, so it also depends on if you're applying for a private university, nonprofit private university, or a public university, because that will be a different um, system and foundation for set up for a scholarship. Um, give, using SCAT as an example, we are a nonprofit private university, which means that we have a good foundation to provide scholarship opportunities for all of our students. And 99% of our applicants get a certain number of scholarship. Mm -hmm. So that is something uh, we always encourage students to make sure you ask and reach out. But the thing about our admission process is you do not need to submit an additional application for scholarship. Once you complete your application, we will also evaluate your transcript and um, all the other documents, including portfolio and resume for scholarship opportunities. And we offer different type of scholarship. It can range anything from just $1,000 to full scholarship. Of course, it can be really, really, really competitive when it gets to full scholarship. Um, students have to be bright, have to be um, excellent academic performance and excellent portfolio, outstanding um, achievement performance that we're looking from the resume. So those are the students that may have a chance to get the full scholarship, but most of the students will be able to get some amount of scholarship that will be applied to their annual tuition. And uh, it depends on what university that you're looking for. A lot of the university, the scholarship is renewable. What does that mean is you're not only getting it for the first year, it's not a one-time scholarship offered to you. If you're able to maintain a certain GPA, you will be able to renew that scholarship for another year, another year, and another year until you graduate. 
So that is another thing about scholarship, um, admission scholarship when you get awarded in that, especially for SCAD. We do offer a lot of scholarship that encourage students or to support students financially, because we know that, especially for international students, you are not only paying the tuition, there's also housing, living costs, transportation that you need um, to support yourself in the United States. So we definitely do our best to help you on that. All right, so talking about this uh, financial aid or scholarship, that as we help Education USA help the students, that the first question is always about financial aid or scholarship. So uh, that's a really common question. All right, I think it goes to the next question. I think that's from me, Vivian. Okay, uh, where uh, do you see the alumni end up after the graduation? Whether they do uh, they create their own job or they're looking for a job in the workforce? Both, I would say, especially in an art and design university, um, a lot of our students, they are creative, you know, they're artists. And right now we see a lot of higher and higher demand for designers and artists in the industry, especially in the technology industry, actually. Um, our students work for Google's, Airbnb, uh, Uber, all these technology companies that require different kind of design for their products. You may be surprised of the demand for that because, you know, 10 years ago, when we talk about art school, you may be thinking, what are you going to do after you graduate? Yeah. Like, are yes, you going to earn I any money? I agree like, with that. How, like, but now it's 2020. The world has evolved into another era that is actually in high demand for art and design students. Um, especially graphic design students who are in high demand in marketing, advertising, and also user experience design students, interactive design students, service design students, all of these students, are, the companies are looking for them. They are like, they are so, the demand is so high that um, the companies, like our students with that multiple job offers when they graduate, that they need to choose which company to go. So this is something um, what the what the industry have shifted from like from ten years ago to now, and um, some of the students, of course, they started their own business, especially um, fashion designers, and when I, when they into like painting and sculpture, those are the students who will start their own studio and start their, their own business into creating their own artwork. But a lot of students also they're able to get a great job um from great companies in the US especially even art and design school we all have STEM majors um believe it or not at SCAT we have 13 STEM majors oh. which um students are heavily using technology and also they are innovating from technology and um they are even developing their own um interface and software from user experience design and um so it is amazing how this diff student from this different discipline will be placed into different um, careers and different positions in the creative industry. So I would say the opportunities are so wide that you can be anything you want. Yes, I completely, I completely agree with you. In the past, if we talk about, hey, I'm going to the art school. So what are you going to do with art school? How do you earn money with art school? Right. So right now, that's completely different, right? So a lot of demand for if you're going for the art school, you can work anywhere. So that's really great example, as you mentioned about that your alumni from SCAT. All right. So I think uh, that's the next question, so Vivian. Uh, that's one one uh, students asked about the, what kind of the portfolio you 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 mentioned portfolio a lot. Right. What kind of the portfolio required when they're applying for the uh, for the art school? So there are um, two different admission process that I have to mention. The first is undergraduate. The other one is graduate and two processes have different requirements for portfolio. For undergraduate program, SCAP actually do not require students to submit a portfolio. But um, I always encourage students to, because it will give you another big opportunity to get additional scholarship. 
So um, the portfolio for undergraduate, we do accept multiple types. The first is visual art, the most common one. Um, it can be a canvas you take picture of, it can be a painting, a color, watercolor drawing, or a digital art that you have, or a photograph that you have put, and you can put any um, 10 to 20 pieces together on as your portfolio as a 2D portfolio, 2D visual art portfolio, and even pictures of sculpture. So that's 3D, but um, put them together. It will all be showed at, on slides digitally that uh, submit digitally, the portfolio would be. So that's undergraduate. Um, more than that, we also accept portfolio, other types like writing portfolio. It can be research paper. It can be poet, poet poems. It can be creative story piece that you have written. And um, another type we also have is video. Video, like two to five minutes. It can be video that you have produced. It can be video that animation that you've done, or it can be videos of your performance arts. Performance arts, including singing, dancing, or acting on the stage drama. So all of this are acceptable to be part of your portfolio. Um, it may be interesting fact that at SCAD or at a lot of liberal at um, liberal arts schools, some of them, we do have a program called it's Equestrian Program. So Equestrian, we also accept Equestrian portfolio, like students rising horses, doing stunts. So those and other uh, acceptance because that is part of performance that we consider. And then that's for undergraduate, really. And the second part, the other type is for graduate portfolio. For graduate students, it's very, very specific. And I can't answer it all here because students will need to go, uh, go on this university website, make sure you check and read carefully on what the specific guidelines for each different programs. Some of the programs may require students to submit two to three different projects that you have done. Some of the, um, some of the programs may require you to have entire business plan that you have as your portfolio with design of your products or anything like that. So it's very different various of different program and it is required for graduate programs. It is uh, mandatory. It is unlike the undergraduate program. So uh, for more portfolio questions, um, I also conduct portfolio workshops. So definitely check out what events we have and join our workshop, like portfolio workshop at SCAD too, if you want to know more details and um, about those. So as you mentioned, that portfolio is uh, becoming the big part of the application. So if the student not submitting the portfolio, so I guess the, the admission is not going to see the application. Is that correct? We do. Um, as I mentioned okay. again, for undergraduate, we do not require under, uh, we do not require portfolio, so we will still evaluate and give out the admission decision. Okay. But then, for students who do not have a portfolio, um, we kind of like it's what a pity because you're losing on a big yep. scholarship that you yes. may be getting if you submit one. All right, so we're gonna have like uh, three more minutes for the uh, for the this session. It's gonna be a really interesting and creative session with you, Fifian. I can I think Thank I you. can say uh, I think I have one question uh, being asking a lot about uh, is there any a lot okay uh, right now because we are during pandemic right so everything is online. Mm -hmm. But as you mentioned that everything in goes to fine art, it's more like you, you do a lot of things in the studio. You have to take class in the studio. Like if you go into the uh, theater, uh, theater class, you have to go in like theater classes. But right now we are doing online. How exactly the SCAT itself can adapt with the situation where you, have to, you, you, you are supposed to be in the class, but you right. can't. Yeah. Right. This is an excellent question because for SCAD, I can't wait to share with you because we actually have our e-learning program for 16 years. We are one of the oldest history of art and design university who are able to have the e-learning platform. So uh, it hasn't been a great problem for us, but of course for students, you know, it's still a struggle for them to uh, maybe finishing up some projects or assignments, but then 
it actually turned into an opportunity for them to enhance their problem solving skills. And we see it as a really successful period of time where even in the pandemic, we started to have all of our classes being virtual and virtual or completely on e-learning, completely online since March, since our spring quarter, and which has almost been a year. And within this pandemic, our students are still be able to complete the final projects, final assignments. And this spring, we still have um, 2,200 students able to graduate virtually. Wow. Wow. So it was amazing how our students are able to um, finish their assignments even all virtually. Like imagine some examples I wanna give, they're not able to use the studio on campus. They're not able to um, access to all those resources on campus. And they can only contact, connect with their professors um, virtually. But then one example is um, one of our students in Canada, like an international student that from Canada, he is not able to enter the US to complete the program, but he was able to complete his assignment. He's a film major. He did entire film in his hometown, in his home, home country um, on a mountain in Canada. Um, and he's able to, um, he, so what we do is he has all the gears that shipped it to him and he's able to um, complete the entire film, finish it and do all the post production in his, at home in Canada. So that is something um, very inspiring to us in no matter how difficult it become, our students will find a way or we will find help them to find a way to complete the projects in no matter how it is. And that is also what the companies is looking for the mobility for them to able to work mobily and work virtually, even at home, they will be able to finish their work. So that is something that is uh, also we seeing the creative industry is needing and require our graduates to have when they're looking for their job after they graduate this year. All right, thank you, Sisian. Thank you so much. Since we have running out of time, so we don't have a time any longer. So uh, as the last, <laughs> You think uh, probably you can mention about your email again. Uh, sure. So you can type in on the chat box if the uh, participant really wants to connect with you, asking about the program and everything. So uh, one uh, one participant asking about your uh, Instagram, you already mentioned that on in, in chat box. All yeah, right, definitely you. follow me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank you for the you, Vivian. Thank you for a participant and. Then all right, so we get right now we're gonna have a video from uh, from a lot of different campuses. All right, then tomorrow we're gonna Thank have you. the second day of our virtual week and rock show, and we, tomorrow is gonna talk about the the STEM science, technology, engineering, math for uh, specifically for the undergraduate program. All right, stay tuned with us for the whole week this week. All right, thanks so much and see you thank again you. next time thank you vivian thank you all thank you everyone have a great day bye